You play with your toys. I play with the cosmos. It's a part turn-based strategy game and part JRPG. Regalia of Men and Monarchs is the genre-blending indie debut from developer Pixelated Milk. Regalia has you recruiting and controlling a large cast of characters as you fight to restore order to your kingdom, which is beautifully rendered with 2D environments. Visually, characters were inspired by Vanillaware, the Japanese developer of games such as Odin Sphere, Muramasa, and Dragon's Crown. Vanillaware is known for exaggerating their character designs, and Pixelated Milk wanted to do the same, exaggerate certain features to make each character unique. The cartoonish art style helped complement this design choice. In indeed, not even mini-boss material. Hey, what? <clears throat> what is that supposed to mean? I am evil. Respect me! Weirdness sure follows you, young master. Each character's color scheme was meant to be unique, and their silhouettes were meant to draw out certain features. Initial ideas for the characters came from the team's writer, but there was still plenty of freedom to work from those ideas. They were sometimes unsure if character designs would align with the original vision, but often the character's personality would later be adjusted to match the character designs. You see, I, Theophilianis von Totenkrus, have always wanted to be a hairdresser, but fate dealt me a cruel hand. My vampiric condition did not mesh with my destined profession, so I chose evil. Part of the image, no. Um, I don't think you're doing a very good job at it. Some characters, such as the blacksmith Gunther, didn't even exist in the initial draft of the game. Instead, they started out as a miscellaneous doodle made while working on other characters. My name is Gunther. Well, young man, will you shake my hand as befitting the manly men that we are? Personality is infused into each character. You can see the contrast between the wild nature of the feral Signy to the prim and proper royalty of Gwen. By looking at a character, you can tell not only their personality, but also their social standing and potential role in the world. This is absurd! To decide on the general vibe and feel of the characters, they found it useful to put themselves in the character's shoes. What emotions is a character supposed to evoke in the player? What about when that character interacts with other characters? They found that if a character proved interesting in that context, it was only a matter of time before they found the perfect look to pair with that character's personality. You seek to coddle me, insolent child! I am Lord Azaleus Castellavant of Lordemar, and you will show proper respect! Like the characters, the environments were similarly detailed and elaborate in design. A large host of 2D environments are used to portray your kingdom, ranging from fields and forests to castles and dungeons. The decision to go with 2D environments was an easy one. It allowed them to preserve the painting-like quality of the graphics. Each background request came with reference photos, a description, and a predefined grid shape for combat backgrounds. Aside from that, there was great creative freedom in designing the environment. Color played a significant role in setting in the mood of a background piece. Backgrounds were split into layers and animated using a parallax scrolling effect. Subtle animations would be applied to water, grass, trees and other parts of the environment. 
Photoshop was used for proper color correction. However, for sketching the backgrounds and applying and blending colors, Paint Tool Sai was used. A goal the team had for the combat design was to avoid each character having a generic attack command. Instead, they wanted each ability to have positive or negative effects. With dozens of characters, this leads to potentially hundreds of different abilities and ability combinations. Emphasizing the strategy aspect of the combat was important. This meant making the combat more open and giving the player more options. For example, there are dozens of characters in the game, but there are no character classes. This gives you the flexibility of playing each character in your own way. Unlike many other strategy games, Regalia does not have combat healing. Characters have shields which protect them, but can be gained or lost during a fight. If, however, these shields are depleted, the character's health is vulnerable to attack. Authority points was another system implemented in the game to emphasize the strategy. Authority points are a resource that slowly accumulates over time. With enough authority points, you can attack a second time or even use as a devastating ability, turning the combat in your favor. Blending JRPG and turn-based strategy genre presented its own set of challenges. But with enough iteration and refinement, Pixelated Milk was able to deliver a distinct experience. I think we've had enough implied violence for one day. <laughs>